Join us now then on this trip through history to see what's happened to the 38th over those 25 years. Here's our 1984 camp at Flangatak near Crickhall in South Wales. And this was our t-shirt. Very nice it was too. And we start off the, with a map showing us uh, what part of the country it was in. Langatuck is uh, close to Krakow, which is um, between Abergavenny and Brecon. And so we we leave. Uh, this is leaving us leaving Downend actually. Downend Chapel there, across the, the Seven Bridge, and uh, there was only one Seven Bridge in those days. Um, and up into the uh, the mountains of, of Wales and uh, here we arrive at the site there's Skip's yellow van and the minibus carrying the scouts and then we set a camera up overlooking the uh, the site to do a time lapse of the construction of the site and all the tents going up. This is quite a few hours condensed into half a minute or so. That was it. Camp up. Well, almost. Still lots of supplies to put away, particularly all the food that um, And then the map shows us of a, a trip to Flangos Lake. And here it is. Ch time to relax for a little while without any formal activities. But being a, a lake in the mountains, I don't think it was very warm somehow. We've got quite a few Venture Scouts with us this time. Um, And uh, somebody, namely uh, Daniel Farrant, has uh, got himself injured already. And Vern's got a fish. Quite a crowd here at Flangatta. Here we are on the Sunday with uh, Skip conducting a hymn for our scout zone. And then we uh, we travel to the Brecon Beacons. To, uh, to do the length of the beacons and basically it consists of about four peaks with valleys in between. First of all we've got to climb up and that's quite a long way because the beacons are 3,000 feet high and so we had a, a long climb up to the, the top. It was hot. And soon we've reached our first trick point. And now we're basically going along the ridge. Well worth well worn path. Many people walk this, but uh, it's quite arduous. 
and uh, as soon as you've come up gone up one to one one uh, one trig point you back down and then back up another one and we've got a a rope bridge as Matthew Day rope bridge between um, across the valley there so that's uh, quite an effort there because you're not just a couple of inches off the ground it's quite a long way up and if you lose your balance there then you've got a, quite a long drop especially if you do something silly like that Not far from Thangatak are some, um, there's a, a training area that's used by Mount, Mountain uh, Rescue and I think by the RAF for training as well. There's, uh, it's about a hundred foot down that top, but there are um, rings set into concrete at the top for securing your rocks, your ropes to. But uh, that's, um, that's quite a substantial drop and especially for a young scout going over the top is uh, is quite an experience there we are from the bottom gives you some idea of it and how far it is and here's someone being very very cautious was a fast descent it's the sort of thing we used to expect from Bill Cooper but I'm not sure if he was with us on that occasion and back to camp we had quite a few adults at camp Belinda Rob well, Webb's a leader in this one And then we go to uh, to Usk, to the um, grass skiing centre, and uh, oh, that's a funny looking scout. Where um, we enjoy a, a half a day. Some get on with it well, and others struggle. And some just submit. But some do really well. Polly, I think she's about to do a, a crash landing. There were quite a few crash landings actually. Getting up wasn't a problem, you just hung on to the the 
envelope and off you went. Oh gosh, that looks potentially painful. And so that was uh, that was our visit to the Ask Grass Screen Centre. flares but I'm not quite sure why and uh, here Scripps father comes to visit us and enjoying a, a kebab there's not a lot on that one is there There's Helen with her grandparents. And Belinda's certainly managed to get lots on hers. I don't know whether this was organised or impromptu, but. Obviously impromptu. And here's Robert Webb, and we've seen him through the films, move from being a, a cub and a scout and now a leader. And now it's his turn to inspect. Oh yes, an insect. Right, another one of those games that involves going into things and under things and over things and floating on things. thought that wasn't going to work. It's Jason Bishop. Must have been some sort of river that sank off it, but I, I don't remember that. And then the leaders were invited to have a go. Not so much running, more walking this time. But you've got 
got to set the example sometimes as a leader. And off we go on a, another trip. And here's Rob's mum and dad come to visit us. Meal time. That's pretty small portions there. Well, fingers were made before forks, weren't they? And then we go to uh, to Big Pit at Blan Avon. Um, this is part of the uh, Welsh Museum and uh, it was in fact a, a genuine working pit at, at one time about 300 foot deep and now allows the public to, to see the conditions in which miners functioned. As you could see, Belinda was uh, sig significantly pregnant at the time. These are the uh, the winding workings that uh, control the descent and rising of the of the cage as it takes people down 200 foot to the uh, to the working level. So that was our trip to the big pit. And now we come to the to the last Sunday of uh, of camp. And there's all the leaders. The uh, scout leaders and the venture scout leaders, Dave Gadsby. Um, Carolyn Goucher, the assistant venture scout leader. And we look again on the map to show that uh, this time we're going to the Brecon Beacons National Park. Again a long climb up. And finally there we are on top of a trig point. How many people can you get on a trig point? That's the question. Well we're about to find out. It's quite a few. That's a quick way of getting down, I suppose. Well, that was that trip. And here's some various awards that were handed out for all sorts of uh, um, honours degree in posting, posing and complaining uh, that caused quite some amusement
and the inevitable stakeout again. Matthew Day on this occasion, since he was the new one there. Everything they could think of to put on top of him. And then this is the Weir um, at, uh, at Crick Howell, just a mile or so down the road from, from where we were camping. Very old narrow bridge that uh, joined the the ground on of Crick Owl on the north to uh, to the south area. It was a hot sunny day, so the water was welcome. Everybody enjoyed themselves and had fun. The scouts dived over the wheel and the fish tried to jump up it. And then a tug of war. But it wasn't the scouts, it was a, a some sort of local f fate. Everybody was thrown in. And if you got messy, then, oh well, there was always water to get it off. Well, we were coming towards the end of, of our camp. multiples numbers of uh, people staked out and covered in anything that was available and gender certainly didn't protect you from, from anything Well, here we approach the closing ceremony of 84 Camp of Thangatot. It was a very big one, there were lots there, lots of scouts, plus we were joined by the most of the venture scouts as well. But it was time to uh, bring the flag down for the vehicles to roll and for our summer camp at uh, Thangatak in South Wales to come to an end. <laughs>